Welcome to Overthinking Eurovision. I'm Matt Rather. Israel hasn't been a serious Eurovision contender in a while. They won in 1998 with trans singer Dana International. And by the way, Europe, congrats on voting for a trans woman way back then. America wasn't quite so progressive. Around the same time, Ellen DeGeneres came out of the closet, as did her character on the sitcom Ellen. The television executives got so many death threats they needed to have guards outside their houses, and the network started running this warning before certain episodes of the show. This program contains adult content. Parental discretion is advised. But in the past 20 years, the best Israel has managed was fourth place. From 2011 to 2014, it didn't even make the finals, and last year it came in 23 out of 26. Oy, get vault. But at the time we recorded this video, Israel is the favorite to win in 2018. Of course, being the favorite doesn't necessarily mean you are going to win, just ask Italy from last year. Or ask my bookie, to whom I still owe money after betting heavily on that gorilla. But right now, it looks like Israel is floating up to the top of the pack like a delicious, fluffy matzo ball. There are always songs in Eurovision that tackle serious issues. This year, France's song is about a girl born to Nigerian refugees on a boat in the Mediterranean. Italy's song references terrorist attacks in London, Paris, and Barcelona. Malta is calling attention to the stigma surrounding mental illness, and also encouraging us to revolt against our dystopian overlords. But Israel is the only country addressing what is probably the biggest social issue right now where we come from. Hashtag Me Too. It turns out that Me Too has been a big deal in Israel. In November 2017, an Israeli television anchor was inspired by the movement to tell her own story about being propositioned by a media mogul early in her career. And in mid-March, a major tech investor was accused of groping female entrepreneurs looking for investors. So Israel was ready for a Me Too anthem, and Netta delivered. You might expect a song about sexual harassment to be serious, somber, and painful. For example, the Kesha song, Praying, is about being abused by her producer, and her performance at the Grammys brought people to tears. Some of those people were named Matt. But although Toy shares the same anger, the tone is wildly different. I'm not your toy! I know how strange it sounds, but hear me out. This song about sexual harassment actually sounds fun. The song wants you to dance to it and laugh at it and sing along with it. I mean, if this is not a future karaoke smash, then I don't know what is. I'm not your toy. Let's talk about the clucking. She's mocking the boy by comparing him to a chicken, which is interesting. We don't usually think of people who objectify women as cowardly, but maybe we should. Society says boys will be boys and looks the other way at bad behavior, whether it's intimidation, harassment, or professional misconduct. What all these types of abuse have in common is that instead of engaging with women on equal terms, the men are trying to make things as uneven as possible. Either they're afraid of not getting what they want if they played fair, or they're afraid of a world in which women are just as important as they are. Either way, they're afraid. Bark, bark. There are a lot of interesting lyrics here. First of all, we just love that Netta is using Pikachu as a euphemism for, well, something sexy. Like, uh, hey baby, you want to come see my Pikachu? But in a broader sense, Pikachu is a perfect mascot for the empowered woman that Netta is representing. Pikachu is cute, generally friendly, but capable of taking out a much larger opponent when threatened. No matter how much you want to snuggle up with Pikachu, make sure to get affirmative consent first. You and I are going to be best friends. <laughs> 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 But apart from the topical and clever lyrics, this song has the potential to steal the show musically, too. Because Netta isn't just a singer, she's a looper. And no, I do not mean an assassin who kills targets sent from the future. Although, who knows, she might be that, too. She's very talented. Netta builds up whole arrangements in real time by looping samples of her own voice. And yes, she even does the percussion. Oh, 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 
There's something really spellbinding about watching her work. She's part singer, part DJ, part bachelorette party. You get a glimpse of the looper in Netta's Eurovision music video, and the word on the street is that she's bringing it to Lisbon for the live performance. That's probably what this quirky intro is for. And I may be overthinking it here, but is it possible that the noises she's making aren't just funny noises? She starts out with a trilling sound. To us, this sounds like a phone, maybe the smartphone she mentions later. Or maybe it's just an optimistic, happy sound. It definitely has a positive, emotional charge, the exact opposite of the sound that she makes next. Ouch. Ouch. It doesn't sound like a physical pain ouch, it's more a hurt feelings ouch. And the third sound is an angry, ha, ha. then a frustrated, hmm. Hmm. and finally, la. la. This sound feels like a reset, a dismissal of the negative tone of the last three sounds. And before you write comments making fun of us for trying to understand these Michael Winslow-esque mouth noises, watch Netta's face. There's definitely some kind of micro story being told here. Ouch. We think that this looping intro is supposed to represent, if not a cycle of abuse, then at least a pattern of frustration. There's the happy trill, then a surprise hurt, annoyance, frustration, and then back to the beginning. So subliminally, the intro is laying the groundwork for Netta's anger at all the stupid boys of the world. But mostly it's just a fun thing to do with the looper. <laughs> Hmm. Dayenu is a Hebrew phrase meaning, that would have been enough. We've used it before in this series, partly because our head writer celebrates Passover at this time of year, but also because it's a very useful concept. So, I'm not your if Netta were only singing a great dance pop tune, Dayenu. If she were only addressing an important issue in a fresh new way, Dayenu. If she were only wowing us with the virtuosity on the looper, Dayenu. And hey, if she were only a woman with a unique look and a fun style instead of the same cookie cutter female beauty standards, Dayenu. You know, there's another thing that you say at Passover. Next year in Jerusalem. For Eurovision 2018, that might actually be true. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Check out some of our other videos and be sure to subscribe to this channel for all the latest from Eurovision and beyond. Ouch. Hmm. La.